Hi, Mama Dr. Tochi here today with an exciting class on how to make possession oil. Possession oil! What can you do with possession oil? Mm. In today's class, we're going to learn about possession oil, how to use it, and how to make it for ourselves and use it to get what we want, okay? This class has a, a lot of moving parts, so I will encourage you to pay close attention. Be sure to have your notepad and pen ready or your pencil, whatever you use. Be sure to get that drink, be sure to get that snack, and learn how to make this really interesting spiritual tool so that you can use it for your own benefit and the benefit of others. So let's take it away. Thank you for coming back. As usual, our housekeeping. Thank you if you are a subscriber. Thank you so much for being part of the Dr. Tochi family. If you are a member, a double thank you to you for financially supporting my work. You are the reason why making this content is worthwhile. If you'd like to join and become a member, click on the join button below this video. Of course, I do encourage you to subscribe. I also encourage you to read the description box below this video to see more goodies that I have for you, including access to me for your divinations and your personal consultations. I also have classes. I also have product services whole bunch of things that I'm sure that you will find useful and interesting as you go along your spiritual journey. Again, beware of scammers. If anyone is using my name, my photo, claiming to be me, claiming to know about me, and soliciting money from you, asking you to come and buy something, or they're trying to scare you, telling you they saw something, they have a message, or there's some kind of threat, don't believe them, they are scammers. All you have to do is just check out their profile, okay? You will see their real phone numbers, you will see more information there that will let you know that it's not me, okay? So be aware of that. I don't send out friend requests. So if somebody sends you a friend request first using my name, my image, or a combination thereof, it is a scam. Don't fall for it. All right. So today we are going to make possession oil. Why would anybody want to have possession oil? Why would anybody want possession oil? What what do you do with possession oil? Who's possessing who? Does it mean you're getting possessed by demons? No. Possession oil is a spiritual tool that we can use to take possession of objects or to repossess objects. It is not meant to possess people. It, you cannot use this oil we're going to put together here to possess people. And the oil will not possess you. It will not open you to possession by others or by entities. It is just meant for material, tangible use. We need to get that out of the way because I know someone's going to come in the comment section and say, well, after I made the oil, I found out that I was possessed. Honey, okay, leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone, okay. <laughs> I was about to say something sarcastic, but I'm going to leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Okay. So, no, this oil is not for demonic possession, is not meant for spiritual possession, is not meant to possess you or any other human being. It's meant for possessing things, okay? So, we can use this oil to take back things that belong to us. So, let's say, for instance, um, we've had somebody who took something that's ours, they don't want to give it back, um, they took a loan, they don't want to pay back the loan, they borrowed something, uh, they snatched something from us, 
and we know them and we're asking them to give this thing back to us and they're like i'm not giving it back to you then we can use this possession oil and we're going to use it with a candle okay you may try possession oil with things that have been stolen from you okay there are some people who do this very well and when they make it very well they can actually use it to recover things that were stolen from them without their knowledge but it tends to work well if you know the person because you're going to use a person's name uh, when we you know get into activating this thing all right so what we're going to need is we're going to need a candle okay so you want to get a little candle um, you can get a tea light. Where's my little tea light here? You can get a tea light. Tea lights are great because you're going to carve the person's name on the candle. So you can get a little candle like this or a bigger candle, depending on, you know, what works for you. You can get like the long candle and something that you can carve the person's name on. Okay. All right. So the next thing we will need for this is commanding oil. You can get commanding oil from your metaphysical spiritual store or botanical. There are ways you can make the commanding oil, but the fastest, easiest thing for you to do is to go purchase it and then pray over it while using it with a candle. Okay, that's the easiest way. You can go and make this from scratch by yourself. You're going to need some olive oil. You're going to need um, some licorice. You're going to need some calamus root in it. You're going to need some hydron the conqueror in it and some other things in it. Okay. But, um, and I think you also need some commanding powder in it. And then commanding power in itself also has its own recipe to make the commanding power. So you see why I'm saying to you, it's a lot easier for you to just go into the store and buy you some commanding oil, okay? So you go into the store, they come in little bottles like this and you buy the commanding oil, okay? So what we're now, and then the other thing we need is a piece of paper, okay? That you're going to write on. You need paper and a pen. I would recommend a pen, not a pencil. You want a pen. On the, pap uh, on the uh, paper, you're going to write the name of the person who took this thing from you or who borrowed it from you or who seized it from you. You're going to write the person's name on here three times, or you can write their name six times, or you can write their name nine times. You choose. You choose one. Okay. You can write their name three times, six times, or nine times you choose how many times you want to write it three six or nine okay then you're also going to write after writing their name on it you know some some uh, practitioners will say once you write the name this way then you turn the paper the other way and then write across their names okay what you want them to give back to you it has to be something that is legitimately yours. In other words, you're not doing this to get something from somebody that they did not get from you. So you're using this to get something back from somebody that is yours. Get that? Okay. So some some uh, some practitioners who say write your name one way and then write what you want to get back the other way. I have found in practice it doesn't matter. As long as you write it on the paper that should suffice, okay? So you can write the person's name three times and what you want back from them three times. You can write their name six times and write on here what you want back from them six times. You can write their name nine times and write back nine times what you want back from them. So you write it on the paper, okay? So after you write that, uh, remember, we already have the candle. You've already written their name on the candle, okay? So you write on the candle their name and uh, one or two words to describe what you want back from them. So don't be writing an essay or a composition on your candle, okay? Just write their name 
and what you want back. If it's money, money, okay? If it's a specific amount that they took from you, for instance, $50, you can say $50. You can write John, $50, and you should be good with that, okay? Now, uh, the best time to do this would be during the waxing moon, okay? Or ultimately the full moon, but you don't want to do this during the waning moon. That's when the moon is getting smaller, okay? Because you want the power of this thing to increase each time you use it, okay? So what you're going to do is um, you're going to get your commanding oil, okay? And then um, you're going to anoint the candle with the oil. And as remember the person's name on it and, and what it is they need to give back to you. And you anoint the candle with it. So you make sure you properly rub the candle with the commanding oil. And as you're doing it, you're repeating, John, give me back my $50. I want my $50 back from you. Give me back my $50, okay? And then so you set that aside. All right. Then the other thing you're going to do is when you have all of that set, let me put my um, oil out of the way so that I don't knock it over. So once you have that all put together, you have your, your candle, you have your paper with the information on it. You're now going to take your handy dandy lighter or matches, okay? And you're going to light the candle. Okay, then you are going to pass this paper through the flame quickly. You don't want to pass it through the flame and set it on fire, okay? So you have to do this pretty quickly. If you need to practice, go get another piece of paper and practice before you do this, okay? But you want to pass it through it quickly and you, you want to pass it through the same number of times you wrote their name here. So if, if you wrote it three times, you pass it through the fire three times. If you wrote it six times, you pass it through it six times. If you wrote it nine times, you pass it through it nine times, okay? And each time, you're saying, John, give me back my $50. 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 And then what you're going to say is, John... I want you, after you've passed it through the flame, that number of times you wrote it here, you're going to say, John, or whatever the name of the person is, I want you get to give me back my $50. You will have no rest, no quiet, no peace until you give me back my $50. If you don't give me back my $50, I will burn this paper with your name and my request on it. And once I burn this paper with your name and my request on it, you will feel the heat, you will feel the fire, and you will not have any rest. Therefore, give me back my money or give me back my car or whatever it was that John took from you. Give me back this thing, okay? You want to give this person at least seven days, okay, to, to give you back this thing. Give them time. Don't just light the candle, pass it through there, and then look at it and say, okay, 30 minutes from now, if they don't show up here, I'm going to burn this paper. <laughs> no. You want to give them seven days. In that seven days, you can reach out to John and call him and say, um, politely, can I have my $50 or can I have my car back or whatever it is, property of yours that they have? Can I have that back? I'd like to have it back. Okay. You don't have to threaten them. Don't be like, I have a candle with your name on it and paper. And if you don't pay me in seven days, I'm going to burn the paper. You're going to feel the fires of hell. No, you don't do that. No, you're not going to be threatening nobody with the fires of hell, okay? All right, you're just going to say, John, I'm just reaching out to you. I'd like to have my $50. I'd like to have my car back or whatever it is that John took from you. Give them seven days to do this. Now, if John 
while you're talking to John, John says, hey, I need two weeks or I need three weeks or here's the amount of time I need to get it together to return it to you. You need to give them that time. So if John says, I'm going to give it back to you in two weeks, you need to give them two weeks. And if at the end of that two weeks, he does not give you back that thing, you go ahead and you will burn this paper in the flame. So what does that mean? You're going to be lighting the candle. You will pass this through the flame the number of times you wrote John's name down on the paper. Say, John, I need you to give me back my $50. John, I need you to give me back my $50. John, I need you to give me back my $50. And then you put out the flame. Okay, you put out the flame and you, and you put this aside. The next day, second day, you come back and do it again. John, I needed to give him my money. John, I needed to give him my money. John, I needed to give him my money. And then you put out the flame and you put it aside. And remember, first or second day, you're going to call John. You want to give John the opportunity to give you back this money, okay? Because you want this thing to work. The point of doing this is to get your thing back. It's not just to go out of your way to torture John, okay? Even though John may have des deserved to be tortured, but that's uh, a whole nother class. Okay, May maybe we should have a class on how to torture. Should we have a class on torture? Anyway, I digress. So, <laughs> because some people will be, I know, so some of the family will be like, no, Mama Dr. Tochi, there are some people we need to torture before they give us back our money. All right, so, so we do that, and each day we're doing that until the the seventh day and we will do this again on the seventh day if after the seventh day John has not given you back that money John has not given you back your car John has not given you back whatever it is that John is supposed to give you back on the eighth day you burn this paper you light up your candle again and you burn the paper and you say John I gave you seven days to give this thing back to me you did not give it back to me so I'm burning this and as I'm burning this, you will feel the fire, you will feel the heat, you will regret, okay? You will regret not giving me back my money, my car, my whatever it is that they're supposed to get back to you. You will regret this, you will feel this. And it will cost you more to pay back this $50 than if you had paid it during the seven days. And you make sure you burn that. You burn... You burn that and you throw the ashes outside because I know somebody's going to ask me, well, Mama, Dr. Tochi, where, what do I do with the ashes? You throw the ashes outside, okay? All right. You throw the ashes outside, blow it in the wind and let it go away. Mama, Dr. Tochi, what if I don't have wind around me? Are you in prison? Are you in a jail cell? Surely, you should be able to blow it out in the wind. <laughs> All right, so that's how that works. And then you sit back and watch and see how this works, okay? This um, is a little ritual, a little uh, exercise that I have recommended to people um, who have, you know, things... Uh, not like huge amounts of money. We're not talking about someone owing you like $1 billion and then you're trying to do this. Obviously, if someone is owing you a $1 billion, you want to get an attorney, right? And then they'll feel the pressure of the attorney plus whatever ritual you're doing. But if you have, you know, some small amounts or, or small, significantly small amounts or small things, reasonable things that you want to get back where there isn't this huge amount of negative energy involved. In other words, the person is like, I'll never pay you or else I'm coming at you uh, with my uh, pitchfork or whatever the case may be. No, you know, whatever the case is, the person is not paying or they don't want to pay, they're reluctant to pay or, you know, something. This is a really good ritual to use for that. Um, I've recommended this, like there was a consultation where uh, the young man said um, his father was always... Uh, taking his his um i think his his he was in college and his father was always coming and taking his tuition money like practically pilfering his his money he would go and work in a restaurant he would make his you know how you work in a restaurant you make your tips and things like that 
The father would go to where he would keep his tips and his tips and stuff was what he was using to fund his his uh, college education. But the dad will always go in there and help himself to these son's tips and he will never pay it back. I mean, so I recommended, you know, because he was still living in the same house with his father, obviously. So I was like, why don't you do this quietly and uh, see what happens? His dad became so uncomfortable. His father became so uncomfortable. First of all, the father stopped going into wherever it was to go and lay hands on the money. The father had to stop that. And then after that, the father started making amends. Okay. And started saying, okay, I know I've used up your money. I don't have your money, but can I do this in exchange for the money I took? And they had to sit down, have a conversation and tally up how much money his father had been taking over a period of time. And then the father had to go uh, and figure out how he had to restitute his son for that money. Okay. And they were still able to live harmoniously under the same roof. So I like little rituals like this because this is something that you can use quietly uh, without a lot of fanfare and get results. So I hope you enjoyed today's class. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about it. Have you used it? Are you going to use it and how you are going to use it? As usual, we end our class with our prayer. We're thankful to our creator, our guardian spirit, our guardian angels. We're thankful to our ancestors, our spirit guides, and all those in the unseen realm who we trust and believe in to help us recover all that we have lost. Ashe.